They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure, or start a new business, Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Wapit and Deli and Eatery, serving delicious deli staples paired with great service and friendly staff. They use the best ingredients and provide a great atmosphere. If you have an office party or an at-home celebration, Wapit and Deli and Eatery can help with your next event. And now you can order online for in-store pickup. Check it out at wapitanddeliandeatery.com or call 642-3639. In this place, we see potential like nowhere else. Here, vision is boundless. That's why we never settle. We look for the moments when everything becomes possible. The moments that inspire us to make every day better. In this place, there's no such thing as good. There's only great. This is orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. The folks at Tyler Farm Supply understand that farming is hard work, and that's why they only offer durable and reliable short-line farm equipment that you can depend on. Whether you're a small-scale farmer or manage a large operation, they have the tools that you need to get the job done quickly and efficiently. Plus, with their competitive pricing and financing options, Tyler Farm Supply makes it easy for you to get the equipment you need without breaking the bank. Give them a call today, 701-642-8827. Every business begins with an idea. With dedication, hard work, and high-speed broadband, that idea can grow into something giant. The member organizations that form BAN are proud to support North Dakota businesses every step of the way, from the soil to the stadium. The Broadband Association of North Dakota, helping North Dakotans grow bright ideas into big business. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to John Randall Field here, beautiful Chahinkaba Park in downtown Wampanoag. I'm Joe Schreiner, and uh, he is Brian Watson, and we are Three Borders Sports Network. We've got our pregame show here brought to you by Yield Advantage. Yield Advantage is the precision planting sales and service center for the southern Red River Valley. Yield Advantage, our pregame show sponsor. Welcome again, everybody, to some North Dakota baseball in the EDC, Eastern Dakota Conference. And again, you've got the Horace Hawks coming in and visiting the Wapiton Huskies in EDC baseball action. And um, again, I'm Joel Schreiner, and I'm joined here in a booth uh, right behind home plate at John Randall Field by none other than the one and only Brian Watson. Beat up. How are we doing today, Joe? I think we're doing good. We got the heat turned on. I'm a little so. warmer today than yes. than last night uh, over on the other side of the river over there in Breckenridge. Yep. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good tonight. <laughs> I might I might break out a sweat. Well, I think we're going to be all right though. <laughs> we're we're going to make it, buddy. All right. So again, we've got some EDC action here, Brian. Uh, already, uh, we talked about it here before we went on the air that uh, the Horace Hawks have already got eight games. Uh, on the schedule here, they're coming in at three and five, and they've got uh, zero and one record in the EDC. As does Wapiton, they're also zero and one. They fell to Valley City by the score of eight to two. But uh, uh, Horace coming in here playing eight games already. They went down to Sioux Falls and played some of those uh, border battle games down there with the South Dakota schools, and uh, they got some games in down there. Eight games already in, on an early season, and uh, that, that can give you a little bit of an advantage, be able to work some of the kinks out, you know, move people around. You know, you, as a coach, you figure, hey, I'm going to put uh, this kid here or I think I can use this kid in this way, and then you get him out there on the field. And, 
you know, things change a little bit. So then you can make adjustments. And to have eight games in and to go up against a team that only has one, and that's a little bit of an advantage here to start the season. You know, Brian, it was a beautiful sunny day, as you can see on your camera shot that you got there right now on our Yield Advantage pregame show. But uh, uh, yesterday it was just a few degrees cooler, but it felt a lot cooler. The sun wasn't out, the wind was blowing, and we had some rain showers just kind of move through the area. But today it's almost a perfect pitcher day for baseball yeah what a different a day makes and uh, not having those clouds rolling in here you got uh, blue skies out there with just some puffy clouds uh, yeah. but the sun shining down on john randall field so that'll make it nice uh for us to start at least it might cool off here in game number two but uh should be a good evening for baseball it should be a good evening for baseball here again the uh, winds today it's about 59 degrees it said it feels like temperature of 58 yesterday we were at a feels like temperature of 51 i think it was but it was a chilly chilly north northwest wind last night today the winds out of the southwest at about six miles an hour the flag out on top of the scoreboard just barely moving and uh we should be in for a good baseball game today. Here is Jaden King going to take the hill for the Huskies and grabbing the mound for the uh, Horace Hawks will be Cason Borkhart. So a couple of good uh, couple of good pitchers here coming up for the game today in an EDC battle here between the two. To be a good matchup, uh, you can say Jaden King's going to be the ace for the Huskies here this season, the big lefty. Um, you know, had a good Legion season last year, and uh, he'll be rocking and firing and ready to go here today. All right, we're going to take another short break, and when we come back, we will have our Miller & Associates starting lineups here coming up next, but this will conclude our Yield Advantage pregame show. Yield Advantage is the Precision Planning Sales and Service Center for the Southern Red River Valley. We'll be right back, folks, with the starting lineups coming up next. In Wapitan, we make sure that when you need a vehicle, we'll find the perfect one that matches your lifestyle and budget. Like the eye-catching Chevy Equinox, the powerful, always dependable Chevy Silverado, or the rugged, hard-working GMC Sierra. Since 1960, Smith Motors has provided an excellent automotive buying experience. From low-pressure sales to high-quality service, our customers always come first. Find your new Chevrolet or GMC today at Smith Motors. Small town friendly, big town deals. Advantage is proud to support our local Twin Town teams. They'd like to remind farmers that the Yield Advantage team is ready to help you get the W next planting season. They can help get your equipment in game shape with upgrades large and small. Yield Advantage is your local precision planting premier dealer. From row cleaners to closing wheels, seed meters to liquid fertilizer systems and everything in between. If you want to give yourself a competitive edge next season, contact Yield Advantage today. A local insurance team ready to serve you. American Family Insurance, Miller & Associates. Providing home, auto, life, farm, and business insurance. As residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you, their trusted friends and neighbors. Together, they're building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. American Family Insurance, Miller & Associates. A proud supporter of high school athletics. And we hope to see you at American Family Insurance, Miller Associates. Welcome back to Three Borders Sports Network, everybody. And uh, we're back here at John Randall Field in beautiful Chahinkapa Park. And we got Josh Nordic for an umpire, and we also have Kelly McNary for an umpire today. So Josh is going to, looks like he's got behind the plate in the first game. Kelly will be on the bases in the first game. They'll switch for the second game. Second game is a scheduled five-inning game, uh, so that will be a non-counter uh, in the game two. And uh, we'll have that on the air for you as well. Uh, that'll be a separate link. So when you come back for game two, you'll have to go to a separate link. But John Randall Field, Brian, looks pretty good here for early April. For early in the season, looks uh, looks pretty nice out there. Yeah, it does. Uh, I was out there walking around a little bit and a uh, little spongy in some spots, but that's all right. I mean, it's, uh, it's 
It's just the way it is in the spring. I'm not going to complain. No, this we're time not. last year there was a little bit of snow there on the ground, snow so on the ground. I'll, I'll take uh, 50 degrees and and the sunshine in here to to start the baseball season. The home opener here for the Wapenden Huskies. The Horace Hawks here, uh, head coach uh, Irie is going to be uh, Quinn Irie is his name, and then uh, assistant coach Preston Cath, the name from the from the Wapenden days. That sounds familiar, right? Yeah, I had a little chat with PK before the uh, before I uh, came up here, but. Uh, Nice to talk to PK as always. All right, we're ready to send it over to our PA announcer, Chris DeVries, with our Miller & Associates starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to beautiful John Randall Field in Chehankaba Park. Here we're going to announce the starting lineups. First for the visitors on the scoreboard, the Horace Hawks. Leading off, number four, the shortstop, Jet Collins. Number two, the third baseman, Charlie Lashovsky. Number three, pitching, Kaysen Borkhardt. Number 16, the first baseman, Evan Krogan. Number 18, the right fielder, Cooper Fuchs. Number 14, the second baseman, Brady Strom. Number eight, the left fielder, Austin Olean. Number nine, the catcher, Espen Westby. Number 12, the DH, Kaysen Nordic. Number five, the center fielder, Jackson Naram. The reserves, number one, Bryce Nelson. Number 13, Tyler Helmstead. Number 17, Todi Redderath. Number 19, Caden Rademacher. And now for the home team. The Hawks are coached by Quinn Irie, Preston Cath, Kendall Schlevy. And for the Wabanen Huskies, the reserves, number two, Avery Malmi. Number nine, Brady DeVries. Number 17, Ryan Kozowski. Number 20, Jacob Fenske. Number 22, McCade Picken. And number 24, Eli Kappas. And the starters. Number three, the shortstop, Skyler Blado. Number 10, the center fielder, Braden Steffens. Number six, the pitcher, Jackson King. Jaden King. Number 23, the first baseman, Braxton Polly. Number 12, the third baseman, Cooper Klosterman. Number 11, the catcher, Nick Langenwalter. Number 8, the right fielder, Aiden Hayek. Number 5, the second baseman, Cade Malmi. And number 1, the left fielder, Kaysen Pinsonall. The Huskies are coached by Andrew Lunsetter, assistant Hunter McCall, Brett Gilbertson. Now, if everyone would please rise, remove your headgear, and stand for the playing of our national anthem.
There's our starting lineups brought to you by Miller & Associates, American Family Insurance, offering home, life, business, and farm insurance for your needs. And the starting lineups introduced for both teams along with the coaches. And uh, B-Dub, we're just about ready to get underway here and have some EDC North Dakota baseball. Home opener for the Wapton Huskies. Ready to go. And a beautiful day it is here at John Randall Field, here located in beautiful Chehinkapa Park. Um I want to say that our first pitch is going to be brought to you by Tyler Farm Supply as well, your shortline farm equipment dealer since 1985. And it's located down in beautiful, scenic, downtown Tyler, North Dakota. Thank Jason, the crew down there, for jumping on board with us here at Three Border Sports Network. If you're interested in doing any advertising with us, Brian, they can sell us, send us an email if they'd like to. At Three Border Sports Network at gmail.com. At gmail, and it's Three Borders with the number three. So we're just, uh, again, uh, a little bit of a different lineup here looking for the Huskies here this year, Brian. Of course, uh, uh, Jackson Fleetfoot uh, left the, the home plate area as the catcher, and Caden Kappas out in the middle of the infield. Caden Hawker all graduated. Schroeder graduated. Gavin Schroeder, just a lot of those guys now disappearing. So, you know, Coach uh, Lunsetter talked about it in the coaches' show Wednesday night beat up that uh, – you know, there was a lot of seniors that left, but he's senior heavy. But a lot of these guys didn't get to see playing action because there were so many seniors last year. Right. The Huskies were a uh, <clears throat> senior loaded team and loaded with talent at the senior level. And when you have that, you have players that, you know, that are still right behind and they get to move into their senior season, but just don't get a lot of experience. So a lot of these kids that are playing today uh, for the Huskies, yeah, yeah, older kids, but really yeah. haven't seen a lot of a lot of time on the field. So yeah. It'll be a kind of a work in progress as the season goes on. I think you'll see great improvement, and uh, we'll see how they do here to get today in game number two. Jaden King on the mound, of course. He's uh, considered somewhat the number one pitcher for Wapiton, the big lefty up on the hill, and uh, he can stretch it out and bring it home in a hurry. And then also on the hill, uh, we talked about Borkhart a little bit ago, but Preston told me he considers him their number one pitcher. So there's a couple of number one pitchers going at it. Could be a low-scoring game. And we'll see how it goes. But, again, here's our Tyler Farm Supply. First pitch, your shortline farm equipment dealer since 1985. And first pitch by Jaden King is delivered at 5.05. So 5.05, our first pitch. Thank you, Tyler Farm Supply. And first one was outside for ball. And here's pitch number two, and it's outside again. So Jaden King... Familiar with the mound, familiar with John Randall. Spent a lot of time on this field. He sure Between has. High school ball and Legion ball. There he brought the breaking pitch in there a little bit, and it's two and one. We'll set the uh, defense for you here in a few seconds. As King brings home the two one pitch, swung on and missed. And I forgot to introduce, that's me. I forgot to introduce Jet Collins, the shortstop, as the leadoff hitter for Horace. I was more worried about the first pitch than the, I was Jet. Sorry. The baseball name, huh? Jet, Jet Collins. And there is strike three, called at the knees. Nick Langenwalter behind the plate knew that was strike three right away before umpire Josh Nordic called it. Caught looking. So Big Bird off to a good start here. <coughs> big Jet Bird, yeah. King. Yeah. Watch the boys of summer. Big Bird is a big part of it. Charlie Lashofsky, third baseman, steps up to the plate. There's a ground ball to short, picked up there by Blado. Gets it over to first where that is Braxton Pauley, and that will be the second out here. So a quick pitch there for Jaden King. So nice to get that, that first field play out of the way. Nice play by uh, Skyler Blado. Skyler. Doing a good job over yeah. there. Short stop. Jada was excited. I put my post up there that we're doing the game today, and she was the first one to put it up there that she was all excited for Husky ba baseball today. I think there's a lot of people excited for Husky baseball. And that one sails up a little bit high to Kaysen Borkhart, the pitcher. So the two starting pitchers facing each other here right now. So it's 1-0. and oh. There's a swing, and that one's going to be a base hit right over Blado's head in the left center. Getting over to cut it off is Pinsonall. And uh, he gets it back in in a hurry. So a single to left center. For Kaysen Burkhart on two outs. That was a nicely placed single there. Yeah, he right in nice the gap. swing. And let's see if the Hawks can <clears throat> get things going here with a runner on two outs. 
Evan Krogan steps up to the plate. Flag kind of hung up out there, but you can see the umpire. His pants yeah, his are blowing pants, pretty good. Yeah, it is. Blowing in on Kelly McNary there. You can see his call strike there. It's one and one. <laughs> Again, Evan Krogan at the plate. He's the first baseman for the Hawks. Do up next will be Cooper Fuchs standing on deck. And the pitch just off the plate outside. Ball two, two and one. We'll be back here on Tuesday again for another round of baseball for the Huskies. On Tuesday, they'll host Shanley if the uh, weather holds off. Doesn't sound like the weather is going to be good next Monday night, Tuesday. Now it should be a beautiful day tomorrow, but uh, <clears throat> next week be a change in the weather. might cool down again. What's spring in North Dakota, huh? King behind in the count, three and one. There's a ground ball. Is it going to be sneaking through? It does. Gets past Cade Malmy. And the cutoff throw comes into short, and that will put runners at the corners on a nice base hit there by Krogan. So the number three and four hitters doing their jobs. So the Hawks have the bats <clears throat> work, working here early in the first inning. Let's see if the Huskies can work their way out of a jam here with two outs. So Cooper Fuchs steps up to the plate, the right fielder, with a chance to drive in a run here. First run just 90 feet away in case in Borkhart. It's always good to be back up here at uh, John Randall, isn't it? Yeah. Box. Call strike in the outer half. Especially when you get a nice spring day like this. Yeah. And good heat. Heat. I like the heat. <laughs> good start to the season. You talked about a nice spring day. I was going to go there, and uh, you mentioned tomorrow is going to be pretty nice here. Yeah, it's supposed to be beautiful tomorrow, but great day for prom. Oh, that's right, 0-1, and, and that one's a little low. It's 1-1. One and one. I was going to ask you if you're going to hit the golf course tomorrow, but you might be busy with prom tomorrow. Well, <clears> i got to <throat> make Grand March, so, but I, I, I might wake up early. I don't know. Coach Ralph asked, him, asked me to join him. Got an 8.30 oh. tee time. Might be a little chilly at 8.30, it though. It could be. But. Oh, and breaking pitch comes across nicely for Jaden there. It's 1-2. and two. Nice pitch there from Jaden. Okay. So Jaden trying to work his way out of a early jam here. Jaden's got a good pickoff move to first, so Krogan hanging close. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a bit of a tickle in my throat, so I might be doing that a little more often. Sorry, folks. Two and two, two outs. Outside, now the count's full. Tried to get him to chase there. That one just missed on the outside. Yep. yep. <clears throat> so two hits here, runners at the corners. Got to be a good one. Full count, payoff pitch, swung on and missed, and Jaden King gets out of the inning here and retires Cooper Fuchs on the strikeout. Stranding two, no runs, two hits. No opponent and errors and two left on base. We're going to come back for the bottom of the first. The Hawks zero, the Huskies coming to bat. <clears throat> 1941, Minn Kota Ag Products has been helping farmers with their agricultural needs. The farming industry has expanded at great lengths, and Minn Kota Ag Products is there to provide farmers with their entire chemical, fertilizer, seed, and grain elevator needs. They also offer deep band tillage, chemical application, and fertilizer application, just to name a few. For market access at your fingertips and information essential to your farm operation, download the Minn Kota Egg Products app. Minn Kota Egg Products, proud to be a partner in your farm operation since 1941. 20 years of experience, Dr. Andrea at Hornstein Family Chiropractic is certified in pediatrics and pregnancy, seeing children of all ages daily. Start your pregnancy outright with a correcting postural adjustment to help with daily activities and also give you a better night's sleep. Continued chiropractic care throughout your pregnancy can potentially help for an easier labor and delivery of your new little one. Call Hornstein Family Chiropractic today at 701-672-1300 for an appointment or request an appointment online at hornsteinfamilychiropractic.com. Dr. Andrea Hornstein, helping your family grow up healthy. <coughs> All right, good dad. I, I thought you had button off on me yet. Sorry about that, everybody. 
Pretty good timing there. Yeah, it was, huh? Welcome back to John Randall Field here at Vaterstadt Stadium. How about that? Vaterstadt Stadium here at uh, John Randall Field. And we want to thank everybody for joining us here on Three Borders Sports Network. I'm Joe Schreiner. He's Brian Watson. Brian running the controls and the camera buttons and uh, putting all the graphics up there for you. And uh, actually doing our manual scoreboard today, too, as well. Yeah, I got to work today. Yeah. You know, doing basketball, all this stuff happens automatically. So I got to kind of pay attention here. (laughs) So we'll see. I think you'll do this fine. We'll see if I keep up. All right, so for the Huskies here, coming up in the bottom of the first, you got Skylar Blado, Braden Steffens, and Jaden King. Their first three in the lineup here. And the Horace Hawks has Kaysen Borkhart at the plate, and he hits right at the knees for Skylar Blado. Takes strike one. Two lefties on the hill. Lefty against lefty. We had that last night, too, for a little bit in the Breckenridge and Pelican Rapids That's right. game. Yeah, nice game pitch there by uh, by Logan Church here with the left-handed curveball coming in. We were swinging a miss there. Strike three, three pitches, three strikes. Blado is retired. Going to bring up Braden Steffens. Yeah, Logan Church had that curveball working with the wind last yeah, night, he didn't did, he, from huh? the left side? Big bender. Yeah, we were talking about that when we were setting up this afternoon. Braden Steffens, the center fielder. His, I don't know if it's his first varsity action, but getting some varsity action, his first varsity start, I would bet, as a sophomore for the yeah, Huskies. A lot of players who didn't see a lot of time on the field. Dribble that one up to second and goes underneath the legs of Strom, and it goes into right center field. And uh, I would almost say that was an error. And the Huskies will try and get something going here. In the bottom of the first, they jumped out early against Valley City. Had two runs quick in that first inning, and then just weren't able to finish it out. And here comes uh, Jaden King now to see if he can help himself, as they say. Jaden King, the pitcher. Braden Stephens did a good job getting the bat on the ball. King, pretty big strike zone up there with Jaden. <clears throat> Stands in there at about six four, six five. Borkard not. Not messing around, throwing nothing but strikes so yeah, far. so far, everything's been a strike. And another one. Jaden King with some power, had some home runs last summer for the Huskies, or for post-20. He had a big hit against Valley City, too, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. I remember what Coach said. Ooh, that one's high and tight. There's the first ball issued by Borkhart. Jaden King steps way back into the box. Back foot almost on the back line. That one's a little bit low, so it's two and two. Outfield shaded just a little bit to the left field side. Borkhardt sets for the 2-2 pitch. Swung on, and Jaden knew it was high, and he kind of tried to check swing, but he was already through it. Yep, just couldn't pull back. So two strikeouts here for Borkhart. And uh, Braxton Polly, the first baseman, steps up to the plate. <clears throat> Braxton Polly looked looked upon to deliver some innings off the hill this year, too, as well. Had a good summer season for the post-20 boys last summer. Good crowd on hand here. There is a nice crowd today, isn't there? Start the... Baseball season here for the Huskies. Beautiful day for everybody to be outside. Again, a high fastball gets Braxton Polly swinging. It's 0-2. I don't know if Jada Blado's here or not. She's home nursing an ankle, so we'll uh, we'll hope she's doing well. She broke her ankle and had surgery. So, Jada, if you're watching, there goes the runner. Throw down to second. Not in time, I don't believe. And he gets in there safe, does Braden Steffens. So Steffens using some speed to get down there with a stolen base and get in scoring position. Yeah, we've seen that speed on the football field and able to <clears throat> get in there underneath the tag. That was good timing there by Braden with the left-handed pitcher. Oh, spot for Braxton here to get an RBI. Inside and tight, two and two. 
Deuce is wild on the scoreboard once again. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The Hawks have two hits. There's four deuces up there for you, Brian. Good poker hand. Deuces the hard way there. Yeah. And a swung out and missed, and Borkart with three strikeouts. Wapitan comes up here in the bottom of the first. Stranding one here. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left, or excuse me, one error from the Hawks, and one left on base. We'll be back for inning number two right after these messages on Three Borders Sports Network. Insurance is an important safety net for your family, your home, and your business. Carlson Family Insurance Agency is your local auto owner's insurance provider. At Carlson Family Insurance, they work for their clients, not the companies. Customer service and satisfaction is their number one goal. Give Carlson Family Insurance a call for all of your personal, farm, business, and crop insurance needs. 701-672-6002 or at cfiagency.com. Carlson Family Insurance, your auto owner's insurance agent. Powerful and playful. Delicate and precise. Bold and carefree. It's the way you move, and it moves us. To deliver care for your whole family. To provide options beyond the expected. To help you leave pain in the past and find your way forward. Orthopedics and Sports Medicine at Sanford Health. Health lives here. I'm Kate. <laughs> uh, welcome back to John Randall Field, everybody. It's a Hinkaba Park. I'm Joe Schreiner. He's Brian Watson. Three Borders Sports Network. Brody Strom at the plate. Takes outside for ball one. Got a uh, got a phone call or a text message already on our uh, Amanda Frederick State Farm Insurance shout out line. That's uh, swing and a miss there. One and one. 701-640-2619, 701-640-2619. Send me a shout out there and give me a text. Tell me who you are who you're cheering for. 701-640-2619 is the Amanda Frederick State Farm Insurance shout out line. Two and one. That one kind of squirted away there from Nick Langemalter. Um I was going to say I got a, uh, a message here from somebody that said the base ump looks a little suspect. Can you guess who that's from? <laughs> There's a line drive shot to Skylar Blado, and he puts it right in the mitt, and that is a line drive out. Uh, is that our friend out there in Watford City? That is our friend out in Watford City. <laughs> oh, Greg McNary, boy. and, of course, his brother is Kelly out there on the bases, so that's why he's giving the base ump a little grief. Kelly will probably watch this back. There's Karen and Carly Kappas on our Amanda Frederick State Farm Insurance shout-out line. Karen and Carly watching. On Red River Communications Cable Channel 28. So thanks to you guys for tuning in. One ball, no strikes. Inside and tight, belt high. A beautiful Friday afternoon here for baseball at John Randall Field. Can't complain. <clears throat> That one's just off the plate inside, two, and it's 3-0. and So King goes 3-0 and now to Austin Olean. He's the left fielder for the Hawks. Espen Westby is the catcher. He'll be up next on deck. That one might have been a little bit inside, too. And a walk is issued there to Austin Olean. So the Hawks stranded two in the first. And they get their next runner on base here through base on balls. And so Espen Westby is going to be up next. <clears throat> that one sails up a little bit high. Austin lean over at first base. Espen Westby at the plate. Ahead in the count right now, 1-0. and oh. King sets and delivers. Pop fly, foul out of play. 
So it's one and one. You didn't bark over there, did you? I did not. Good. Did you? No, I didn't. I learned my lesson. I know where not to bark. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. I'm over here behind the tennis court, so it's going to take a pretty good poke foul ball to get over there. That one's in the dirt, but Langwalter does a nice job keeping it in front of him. Yeah, nice job keeping that one in front, holding yep. the runner at first. Again, uh, Jackson Fleetfoot graduated last year and was a, a very important piece to the puzzle last year in the third-place state finish for the Huskies. That one comes up a little bit high. Three and one now. King gets behind in the count again here to the number eight hitter in the lineup, Espen Westby. <clears throat> There's a drive to left center, getting over, not in time, and it's going to go all the way to the wall there as Pinsonall tried to get to it. It'll be a double, and the throw gets back in the Blado. It's short, and... Uh, Runners now at second and third on that double out to the left center. Yeah, that ball hit hard <clears throat> right into the gap. And we'll get a courtesy runner here. Let's see. Courtesy runner going to be Bryce Nelson, courtesy runner over at second base. He'll run for the catcher. That was Aspen Westby that just doubled. <clears throat> Next up at the plate will be Kaysen Nordic, the designated hitter, batting in the number nine spot. He's batting for Jackson Narum in center field. Huskies have the infield in on the edge of the grass. That's a good head coach thing. I mean, you're looking at that right away. Good job, buddy. Uh oh, here comes Andrew Lundsetter. Uh -oh. So we got a mountain visit. Mountain visit brought to you by, as always, Carlson Family Insurance, located on 2nd Avenue in downtown Wapiton. Carlson Family Insurance works for the customers, not the companies. Customer service and satisfaction is their number one goal. He wants to go out and I think just chat with Jaden and just settle him down a little bit. Settle him down a little bit. <clears throat> make sure everybody's on the same page here. Yep. One out here. Runners, Top of the second. Runners out at second and third. And Bryce Nelson out at first base is a courtesy runner for the catcher. Kaysen Nordic at the plate is the grandson of former police officer here in Wapiton. That's Dan Nordic. Dan down on the first base side there, standing up along the net right now, cheering on his grandson. There we go. I want to thank Dan for his service as a Wapiton police officer. Coach Lundsetter had a visit there from Josh Nordic. So he's actually Josh. He's Kaysen's uncle. How about that? So, uncle and nephew at the plate with Nick Lang and Walter in between them. There's a possible bunt, and Kaysen got a, did a good job getting the bat on the ball when that thing sailed up high there. They had to squeeze <clears> plays <throat> on both runners going there. Yep, they were in motion, weren't they? And that might have been what Lunsetter was out there. Coach Lunsetter was talking to him about. Might have been saying, hey, look for this. And it's a 1-1 count, so it could happen again. On deck is Jet Collins, the leadoff hitter for the Hawks. That one comes in high and tight a little bit. It's two and one. <clears throat> the defense, Pinsonall out in left. Steffens in center. Hayek in right for the Huskies. Popped up in the infield, I believe. It's going to go foul. Cooper Closerman's got a track on it. Oh, and miscommunication between him and Nick. Yeah, I, I don't know if Nick called called Cooper off as Cooper stopped yep. and looked at Nick yep. and maybe there was no communication at all and he was just worried about running into him and uh, just lost sight of it. it was over his head and not yep. able to come up with the play and that's one the Huskies are going to look back at and say hey we really needed that one right there yep that's where your pitcher says oh no not that <clears throat> so here we go a 2-2 pitch swung on and missed foul tipped or was it dropped Hurry up, Nick. Oh. And he gets on on the strike, so an air by the catcher. Nick worried about the run coming in. Yep. First base was open, so that's why he was able to go. Go ahead, Beto. No, that's going to say for, uh, force everywhere now. So the infield stays in. Base is loaded. <clears throat> infield will stay in. 
And that brings up the shortstop leadoff hitter, Jet Collins. He struck out looking in his first at bat, facing Jaden King. One out on the board. Just the corners now are in. Pop fly again. First base side. Infield and nobody fly. saw it. Infield fly. Everybody's out. Oh, no. And the throwback to first goes wide. Runners advance at their own risk. And a bad throw back to first base and another error. Yeah, and I think that's one you just got to hang on to <clears> and, just, and just get him back to first base. The runner's yep. on his way back. Yep. And if you don't throw that ball, you don't give up the run. And uh, you have to be almost perfect there. And the Huskies give up one on the error on the throw. So two errors in the inning here for the Huskies. Allows the run to score after base is loaded. That one scoots off the heel and down the second quickly goes Nordic. So runners again now in scoring position here, second and third. Jet Collins was called out on the infield fly. And then Braxton Pauly tried to throw back the first. Cade Malmy covering first, a little bit wide on the throw. Check swing. And that goes back to that. You know, the pop-up <clears throat> in foul territory. If you yep. make that, you have just a solid out. You don't have to worry about the rest of that play happening. Correct. There's a pop fly to right center. That's going to be in the gap. And a long way to run That's for Aiden Hyatt. Back to the wall. So both runs on the bases will score. And heading over to third, there's going to be a throw. And it gets past Cooper Closerman, but not able to come home on that one. On that triple by Charlie Lashovsky. A couple of RBI for Charlie on that one, that too. That ball hit hard right into the gap. There's a huge gap in right center. And that ball hit in the right spot and all the way back to the wall. So a 3 to nothing lead here for the Hawks in the top of the second. Two RBI on that one as well. So King <clears throat> that one's bound over into the Hawks dugout on the first base side. The 0 1 pitch from Jaden King comes overhand with that one. It's swing and a miss. It's strike two. So 3 0 lead here on the Farmers Union Insurance scoreboard. For the Hawks. Ooh, that one. That get him? Yep. So Bokart's going to get the base on balls. Hit by pitch. So now runners again wants it to corners as Nick Langenwalter goes out to talk to his pitcher. Jaden King, of course, there's already been one visit here from Andrew Lunsetter this inning. So if he goes out again, he's got to pull, Jaden. I don't think he wants to do that this early in the game. I would say no Give him a chance to get out of this inning here. You got two outs. Runners on the corners now. Evan Krogan at the plate. Takes up high. And quite honestly, Brian, uh, Nick Langenwalter, uh, again, we talked about Flea Flip being behind the plate for them, but Langenwalter hasn't had that much opportunity to catch Jaden King. Right, exactly. So, I mean, there's a couple of new guys there that are not really familiar with each other. And there goes the runner. And the throw down is not in time. Plato did a nice job of shutting that one down. So a stolen base for Borkhart. You know, we talked about that, how, you know, there's some older <coughs> kids, juniors and seniors playing in this game, but really haven't spent a lot of time on the field with the success that the Huskies have had in the last couple of years here. That one sails up high. It's ball three. Yeah, Jaden King and uh, Nick Langwalter, both seniors. Yeah. But just uh, Jaden was coming up, he was... Always thrown to Jackson Fleetfoot. So 3-0. That one's down in the dirt. And another walk issued here by Jaden King. And the Hawks now will have batted around here as Cooper Fo uh, Fuchs comes along. Jaden's going to have to work his way out of this one. Get, just get out of the inning here. And then he can <clears throat> regroup and come back and get things going. Yeah, I don't have the pitch count here. But he's got to be up there already here as he's... Gone through the lineup one and a half times so far. 
Call strike on the inside corner there to the hitter, Cooper Fuchs. Third base, Cooper Klosterman, shortstop. Skyler Blade okayed Malmy at second and Braxton Pauly at first. They're swung on back into the net. Well, we don't have to worry about anything coming into the, no. the press box here with the big... Not like last night. ...with the net, so... We had one that just about took our camera out last night. Kind of ticked the camera a little bit. It did? Yeah. Knock it a little, it a little bit? Off, yeah, off the, uh, off the front of the Hit press one of the box. legs. Oh, that's what happened. There's a swing and a miss, and it's strike three, so the side is retired here by Jaden King on a strikeout, and that's going to bring us to the top, excuse me, to the bottom of the second here after three runs are scored by the Hawks. We'll be right back after this on Three Borders Sports Network. With First Community Credit Union, and we're here with Dakota Dirt Coffee. We chose First Community Credit Union because first and foremost, they're right in our community of Milner, North Dakota, and the convenience of that and being able to you know the people that we're dealing with, that's something that we can't get anywhere else. I would say FCCU could be best described as a full service financial institution that's offered and available in a local community. At Interstate Engineering, our business is about connections. We connect people to water, communities to counties, and counties to the rest of the world. Our work connects main streets to interstates, and yesterday with the potential of tomorrow. With over 40 years of connecting, our experience and expertise are thanks to the clients we have earned, the trust we have built, and the connections we have made. Interstate Engineering, the professionals you need the people you trust. All right, welcome back to Three Border Sports Network. Welcome back to John Randall Field here at Botterstadt Stadium. Leading off for the Huskies here in the bottom of the second will be Cooper Klosterman, third baseman, big coop. Swing and a miss from Cooper. Three to nothing here on the Farmers Union Insurance scoreboard. There's a call strike to Coop. Cooper pitched the first game out in Valley City and did a pretty good job pitching out there the way it sounded. Well, we saw Cooper on the mound a little bit in Legion Ball. Mm -hmm. One ball, two strikes now to Cooper Klosterman. Borkhart delivers. Swung on, ground ball over to second. Strom picks it up and over to first. Krogan retires. Cooper Klosterman on the ground ball out. So 4-3 is the official scoring in your scorebook. Oh, there's a routine play to get the first out of the inning. <coughs> is that a mosquito? That's a fly. That's a fly. First fly of the year coming to life here. You turn the heat on, Brian, and well, now you got, you got to warm it flies up here. Yeah, they got to find a place to stay. <laughs> Here's a catcher, Nick Langenwalter. Takes outside corner for strike one from Borkhart. Espen Westby behind the plate catching. Left to right, it's Collins, Naram, and Fuchs. Excuse me, that's not right. Collins is at short. I don't have my left fielder written up there in my Oline in left. If you can read my writing. I, I, have, I have no idea what that says. <laughs> I just know what it's <laughs> supposed to be. And uh, third to first is Lashowski, Collins, Strom, and Krogan. And then Borkhart and Espen Westby. Oh, and two now to Nick Lang and Walter. Sails up high, ball. Huskies in their purple trimmed white jerseys and pants. The Hawks in white pants, black shirt, gold trim. Swung on a miss by Nick. And that'll be out number two. That'll be the fourth strikeout here for <coughs> Borkart. You know, outside of that first inning against Valley City where the Huskies put two runs up, they struggled a little bit from the plate. So we'll see if they can kind of right the ship here. They're going to need to try and get things going here. Aiden Hayek steps up to the plate. He's the right fielder for the Huskies. 
Aiden's Jade. Dad Jason is on the uh, baseball board with us. Swing and a miss. So it's one and one. Again, Aiden getting some varsity time now that, again, a lot of those seniors that left, last left some open holes. Swing and a miss on that third place state finishing team. They won the EDC championship last year. First time ever for the Huskies to win a baseball EDC crown. Yeah, great baseball season, finishing third at state. Coach Lunsetter taking <clears throat> coach of the year. Swing and a miss, and there's another strikeout to add to the five total for Borkhart, and that will retire the side. We're going to go to the top of the third. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We'll be back for the top of the third right after this on Three Borders Sports Network. Getting you back to what you love. We are Optimum Rehab. For over a decade, Dr. Tony Egeman has provided physical therapy services for the people of Wapaton, Breckenridge, and surrounding communities. We're a small practice that sees our patients as individuals. Through hands-on techniques, our patients have their treatment plans tailored to their exact needs. Sprains, sore muscles, back pain, achy joints, rehab following surgery, you name it. Optimum Rehab is your answer. When you need exceptional physical therapy, you need Optimum Rehab. Comdell Innovation is now hiring production technicians for a variety of shifts with opportunities to make $20 or more per hour. Work in a clean, climate-controlled facility. Second shift, four 10-hour days, every weekend off, 3.30 p.m. to 2 a.m., and four crew rotation, straight days, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., or straight nights, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Apply in person or online at ComdellInnovation.com. Comdell Innovation of Wapiton, an employee-owned company. Welcome back to John Randall Field, Three Borders Sports Network. I'm Joe Schreiner. He's Brian Watson. Thanks, everybody, for watching Three Borders Sports Network. Appreciate everybody tuning in and watching Three Borders Sports. And uh, we'll have game number two here shortly after the completion of this one. And the uh, link, Brian, will be on our webpage as well. Yep, they're already out there on our webpage and also on Facebook. So, so game, game two is listed. Game two is listed, so you'll have to go to the website and click on that link or find us on YouTube or just go right to Channel 28 on Red River Communications, and you can watch it right there as Brody Strom follows that one off. He led off the inning last inning, Brian. He had that line shot to uh, Skyler Bladeau to start off the inning, and the Huskies were in good shape with one out right away. See if Jaden can settle down here. Yeah, you know, as a senior, Jaden wants to have a good year and getting falling behind here three to nothing in the uh, top of the third here. I'm sure he wants to improve on that a little bit. Yeah, the Hawks have a little <coughs> bit of a head start having played already eight games. That's true. Early in the season, making a trip down to South Dakota. Yep. So they have certainly had a chance to work out some of the kinks and get players to settle in, get comfortable at the plate, things like that. And Jaden King with the 2-1 pitch. Swung on a foul back. It's count now even at 2-2. Two and two. two balls, two strikes. The concession stand not open today. A little disappointed in that. I'm not going to lie. I was <laughs> kind of trying to work out what I was going to have for a yep. little count. evening meal. Didn't really get a chance to have lunch today. No, so. me either. Count goes low. It's 3-2. Or the pitch goes low. A little busy helping somebody set up today at lunch. Yeah, you were over here with me. Thank you. Oh, and there's another shot right back up the middle, right past the box. And a base hit right back up the middle for Brody Strom. Well, so far, Joe, what I'd say is that the Hawks really hit the ball hard. <coughs> uh, they have uh, the balls that they have put in play have been hit solid. On the nose. And uh, they're in the gaps. And I can tell you, eight games will do you good. It sure does. It's going to bring up Austin Olin, the left fielder. In his first at bat, he drew a walk and scored. He was the first run across. And there's a bunt for a. I think they were trying to sacrifice Strom over to second base. Oop, what did we say here? They let him go to. Did he say Bach? 
Did he call Bach again? He had two Bachs last night that he called over at Breckenridge. They must yeah, they must have called a Bach. So the count goes to zero and zero. It goes back to a... Wow. So even though it was a foul ball, didn't count. So now the runner gets the second free on the Bach. And that time, Jaden... Brian, I'm just going to say it might have been a little frustration. A, a little bit, yeah. <clears throat> so on the wild pitch now, Strom goes over to third base. So a couple of bunt attempts here by Austin Olean, and he's moved the runner along to two bases and hasn't touched the ball. Hasn't even made contact. So it's 1-0 and now. Here comes Blado into on the grass. A little curveball there. Caught Olean a little bit there, but ball two. So Malmi and Blado come in. They're at the uh, center of the infield. And the pitch, 2-1, back into the net. Hunter McCall comes out of the uh, dugout to retrieve that one. He'll toss it over to the on-deck hitter. Has he learned how to wear <coughs> his hat yet? I mean, it's... I don't know, man. That one sails outside, and King goes to 3-1 and one now on the hitter, Austin Olean. Nice crowd here tonight. Like you said, Brian, nice, nice crowd, crowd over on the third base side, first base side. A couple puppies out there. Yeah. Bring your dog to John Randall. Day. So it's a full count. Now to Austin Olean. I know I've seen the puppy, but I, there's another one that yeah. comes walking in. There's a... Curveball, Malmi picks it up. He's going to flip it over to Pauly at first, but the run comes across there. So an RBI for Olean gets the run across. <clears throat> so a good play there. That ball had a little spin on it. Yeah, so a little. Did a, did a good job to handle that one and get it over the first and get the first out of the inning. little English on it? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Espen Westby comes up. He doubled in his last at bat and scored. It's a call strike. So the bases are empty now for the Horace Hawks. One out. That dog's a older dog. He's, he's a big boy. Golden Retriever. My dogs would be all over the place right now. You probably wouldn't even sit up I, here with you. I know. I don't They'd be barking all over, wouldn't they? The two doodles that we have would just be <laughs> running crazy. <laughs> King delivers the 1-1 one, one pitch. Ground over to Closterman at third. Cooper picks it up. Steps over toward first and gets it over to Polly to retire Westby on a 5-3 put out. Nice play by Coop. Yeah, nice job at Cooper over there third. Lots of time to make that play. <clears throat> that's two outs in the inning here. That's Trying. one name we haven't mentioned yet was Riley Timian. Well, with Riley was just a mainstay at third base. Wasn't he, though? Yeah, yeah and yeah. post-20. Case and Nordic back at the plate now with two outs. Take strike at the knees for ball or strike one. Yeah, that senior group, they were Tough. playing varsity as sophomores. So yep. it's kind of weird to look out there and you yep. got to check yourself when you start saying names. That one's in the dirt and gets away from Langenwalter at the catcher position, so it'll go to one and one now. Yeah, it was odd to see Cade Malmi out there wearing number five. It was always... Caden Cap is a swing and a miss by Nordic. Strike two. One and two. Jaden King looking over the top of his glove and gets into the windup. The one two pitch. Dribbled out. You gotta touch it when it's foul there, boys. And he does. Foul. Make it official there. <clears throat> put a glove on it. Case of Nordic in his last one. Had strike three, and uh, Nick Langenwalter let it go between his legs there, and he reached on base because there was a runner at third, and Nick did not throw. And now Case and Nordic behind in the count, one and two with two outs. Again, base is empty for the Hawks. Ooh, that hit him. Case and Nordic didn't even move. I'd have been ducking for dirt. That's the uh, second hit by pitch there by Jaden King. 
going to bring up the top of the order. So that's where uh, Jaden didn't want to go as top of the order here with two outs. So with the third time in three innings, here comes Jet Collins. 0 for 2 so far. We'll Chase that one, that one outside. Mm -hmm. He liked that one, but King fooled him a little bit there. The old one pitch now from Jaden King. He's set, looks toward first, and there goes the runner. Langemalter in the dirt, and he's not even going to throw. One and one. Kept the ball in front of himself, but just not able to get up and make a throw. No. Nope. Second stolen base for the Hawks. <clears throat> one ball, one strike delivery. Popped up, short in the infield. Blado should have that one. He does. And that will retire the side there. So Jet Collins is retired on the line drive to shortstop. And that will retire the side. Stranding one. We're going to the bottom of the third. The Hawks score another one. And uh, they strand one as well. We'll be at the bottom of the third with the Huskies coming to bat, trailing four to nothing. 1987, Red River Valley and Western Railroad has served North Dakota and Minnesota with over 500 miles of track. Red River Valley and Western handles shipping, freight car repair, storage options, and now transload services. With over 30 years of experience in the railroad industry, they know dependable service is what you strive for. Red River Valley and Western is proud to be a part of the community since 1987. Founded in 1972, Mindac Farmers Cooperative is owned by nearly 500 sugar beet growers and has a rich history of sweetening life in the Red River Valley. Join Mindac's team today. In addition to an excellent pay and benefits package, they are currently offering a $2,000 sign-on bonus for all full-time positions, which includes sugar loader, packager helper, extra gang, and yard person helper. Entry level starting at $19.78 per hour, plus a $3 per hour shift differential. Apply online at mdf.coop slash careers or contact Zane, 701-671-7777. No well, the Hawks scored one in the top of the third, and it was just on one hit, and they stranded one. Uh, there were... No Husky errors, but uh, the leadoff hit by Brody Strom, and then he uh, went to second on a balk and a wild pitch at third, and then got in on the ground ball. So the Hawks produce another run here, and we're going to the bottom of the third with Cade Malmey leaning it off for the Huskies. Cade Malmey playing second base today for the Huskies. Takes a strike at the knees. It's count now is even at one and one. Grass hasn't quite turned green yet here, John Randall. Swing and a miss. It's been kind of dry. Yeah. You know, we got we supposedly got about an inch of rain here uh, last week. Was that Sunday night, Monday? Yeah. There's a call strike. Cade Malmy caught looking. That will give six Ks total now to Borkhart. And that will bring up Case and Pinsonall. Up for the Huskies, <clears throat> case in the playing left fielder. Yeah, we had about an inch of rain on uh, Sunday, Monday, but uh, it was dry to begin with. Call strike right down the pipe. Now we're supposed to get some more rain, I think, what, Monday and Tuesday? Monday and Tuesday. So, yeah, we're supposed to be at uh, BW Softball. We might get uh, postponed on that one again. And cool down again as well. No, Tuesday is Shanley here. Tuesday, Shanley. Yep, that's right. I was uh, off on my Breckenridge schedule. Breckenridge on Monday. Yep. Wednesday, we're off on three borders. Little check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. So, Pinsonault falls behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. <clears throat> and another swing and a miss and another strikeout to the number nine hitter, Pinsonault. So two outs here in the bottom of the third, and then bring up the top of the order for the Huskies. Skyler Blado struck out in his first at bat. Workhart's got it going here. That's seven strikeouts? Yeah. The only one that, uh, let's see, there was an error. Braden Stephan reached on an error, and Cooper Klosterman grounded out. Otherwise, the rest are all strikeouts. 
tightened up on that one. Did Oh, that's Eli Kappas pinch hitting. <clears throat> so Eli Kappas at the plate. Tough spot to come in here when you're pinch hitting. Working the corner there. That one broke in there nicely. So an 0 and 2. And swing and a miss. That was up in the eyes. And Eli Kappas is retired on a swing and a miss. So three strikeouts. Three up, three down for Borkart. And we're going to go to the top of the fourth here. And the Huskies trail the Hawks four to nothing. We'll be right back on Three Borders Sports Network. <coughs> year, a farmer's relationship with Red River Grain Hefty Seed never changes. Red River Grain Hefty Seed works shoulder to shoulder with area farmers to attain the highest possible profit for you. Red River Grain Hefty Seed has been saving farmers money for years. For all your grain and agronomy needs, stop in or call the friendly staff at 643-3738 or visit them online at redrivergrain.com. At the Amanda Frederick State Farm Agency, we do our best to make insurance a little less insurancy for you. Hi, this is Amanda, your local State Farm agent. You've probably seen our team out and about volunteering in the community, participating in local events, and just doing our all around best to support and encourage a healthy, vibrant community. Stop into our office sometime and find out why we've been consistently voted best insurance agency in the Valley and why State Farm has been a trusted household name and in insurance for 100 years. We hope to meet you soon. At OSPTI, our focus is on each individual's therapy needs, whether it be for speech, occupational, or physical therapy services. I'm Becky, a physical therapist at OSPTI, and I love being able to provide that personal care to each person that we see with clinics in Breckenridge, Hankinson, and Fergus Falls. You don't have to travel very far from home. From infants to athletes to adults, you can request OSPTI to meet your therapy goals. All right, welcome back to Three Borders Sports Network. Got a few defensive changes and along with a new pitcher for the Huskies here. And that one swung on and pulled foul down the third baseline by Charlie Lashofsky. Skyler Blado in on the hill now for the Huskies. Takes over for Jaden King, and Jaden King moves out to right field. And then Cooper Klosterman slides over to short, and Aiden Hayek moves over to third base for the Huskies. 0-1 to Lashofsky, and that one's a little bit low, and it's 1-1 one one now. Somebody's got to come and get, there they go. Looks like we got a. Yeah, we do, okay. I was looking here, something was goofy, but my scorebook is right. That one goes outside for Blado now, it's two and one. <clears throat> I want to thank Digital Guru for our camera shots today and Camera shots there. You can see we got the center field shot. That's brought to you by Digital Guru along with our home plate shot here. A couple of different angles for you here at John Randall Field on Three Border Sports Network. Thanks to Digital Guru. Lido blings it in and bounces off the the foot there, I believe, of Langenwalter and goes back all the way back to the pads. So there's a walk there issued to Lashofsky here in the fourth inning. That's going to bring up Kaysen Borkert. Lado on the hill, and there goes the runner. Swing, and it was not a swing. I thought it was going to be call strike, but it doesn't even. I didn't see him put up his arm either. It was ball one. Ball one, yeah. So a stolen base there for Borkhart. His second one of the day. So not only is he the number one pitcher on the score sheet, he can run the bases can too. Run the bases exactly. <clears throat> Third stolen base for the Hawks. And 
Woods swung on, popped out to right. King goes back, heading toward the track, and he's going to play it off the wall. Hits up high off the wall, and Borkart had to hold up there. He wasn't sure if it was going to be caught or not, but it bounced about a foot from going over. Yeah, again, Joe, just the Hawks hit the ball hard, and the winds died down a little bit. And that ball all the way back to the wall. It's almost out of here. Yep. All right, so what did I miss here? What did I do wrong on my – oh, I know what I did. I'm off a little bit here, buddy. Are you using pencil or are you using ink over there? I'm using ink right now. Well, you might have to switch to pencil. Yeah, I might have to. And now we have Evan Krogan. I was writing it in the wrong boxes, so if I'd have used that pencil that's sitting over there by you. You'd be able to make make corrections, as they yep. say. Janet Gageland would be proud of me. There's another swing. Right to Malmy at second. Holds the runner. Good job doing that. And gets the out at first, holding everybody at, at bay. Yeah, nice play there by Malmy. Knew exactly what he needed <clears> to do. Hold that runner. Have plenty of time to make the play at first. And holds the runner and gets the out. That's the first out of the inning. So... Cooper Fuchs comes to the plate right now. He's got two strikeouts. He'd sure like to do something different here for the Hawks with runners in scoring position. And that one's fouled back. You know, Brian, and, and it's, uh, what is this here, about the fourth time now that we've seen the defensive strategy here, putting the guys on the grass. On the and, grass yeah, there, yeah. It's fourth time today here for the Huskies, I believe. Bringing them in. And the big hit so far this inning is the big double there by Borkhart, the pitcher. He's two for two on the day with a single and a double and a hit by pitch. Plato brings it home. Nice little breaking pitch there from Skyler. That looked good. Yeah, it did. Might have to go back to the well and get that one again. <clears throat> Again, Cooper Fuchs at the line there, struck out twice, 1-2. And he did try the breaking ball, but it was a little bit low in the dirt this time. And yeah, Langenwalter doing a good job behind the plate there, keeping that ball in front. So 2-2 two, two count, one out, runners at second and third for the Hawks. Plato brings it in. That time he didn't break it, and it was a check swing strike. Got him to go around, chase yep. that one on the outside there. Thought that ball was going to come back in after getting the right. breaking ball to work earlier. Exactly. Bat. Exactly. And a good strike out there by Skyler Plato. Big strike out there by Skyler. It brings up Brody Strom. That'll help his cause there. See if he can get out of this. He's one for one, or one for two on the day with a line out and a single. Again, Langenwalter slides over to stop that one from going to the backstop, preventing that run from coming in. One ball, no strikes. Blado delivers. Again, another one in the dirt there. He tried that breaking ball on a right-handed hitter this time and went a little bit low with it. So it's 2-0 oh now to swung on, popped up. Should be playable. King drifting over. Oh, and coming over from center field all the way was Steffens. I don't know if uh, Jaden King didn't see that one off the bat, Brian, or he, what. He but wasn't charging hard. <clears throat> no. And, I, you know, and Braden Steffens was on his horse. They're trying to make it over there and just wasn't able to make the play. And, King was standing there, only had to go a few feet more yeah. to get that ball. So I just have a feeling he did not see that one off the bat. I think he knew it was in that vicinity, but he just didn't know. And Braden Steffens had the hustle all the way over and just kind of overran it. Austin Olean steps up to the plate now for the Hawks. And there's a bleeder out to left field. That's going to drop for a single behind third base. And coming around to score from second was Strom. So just that quick, the Hawks have put four more up on the board. Yeah, a couple of RBI for Strom and a couple of RBI now for Austin Olean. And that's going to bring up the catcher, Espen Westby. I got, Ryan, I got four in this inning. 
Really? Well, just three is what they're saying. What did I do wrong? Who did I mess up? Shosky. All right, we'll get that straight. It's you're only get, seven nothing. You're gonna what have did to get I the pencil out? I know. I might have to get the pencil out there, buddy. Sounds like I only got three this inning. So, my apologies, Ryan. <clears throat> There's a call strike. It's two and one now for Skyler Blado. He's. I thought there were two that came in in the the play out to Stephens. There was. It was the runners on second and third. Right. Oh, here I got that one colored in. It shouldn't have been. Yep, that's right. Just three this inning. Okay. Oh, yep. you, okay, I see what you did. Yep, that's what I did. Westby just, uh, was that a ground out there? Uh, fly out this, or line out the Line second. out the second, okay. Yep. All right, there we go. We're caught up out of my book there, folks, and the coloring book here is we go. getting ugly in the fourth inning. But uh, three runs across for the Hawks here. It's 7 nothing. We'll be right back. I can tell you they have a rock-solid commitment to agriculture. Bell can prove it. To this day, every Bell Bank branch is partially built with rocks we've picked from our founder's farm. But our roots in ag have grown more than a few offices. They've shaped who we are and formed our entire approach to banking. Let us prove it to you as you grow your farm and prepare your legacy for the next generation. Bell Bank, committed to ag. In Wapaton, talk to Rick Steckler. Your business depends on technology. Digital Guru provides professional IT solutions you can trust to keep it moving forward. From redesigning existing systems to brand new builds, we offer your business managed IT services, including backups, cybersecurity, cloud services, remote desk support, and more. And don't forget, we also provide audio, video, security camera, and door access control installation. Focus on what you do best and leave the technology to the professionals. Contact Digital Guru today. All right, we're back here. John Randall Field, Braden Steffen steps up for the Huskies, takes a curveball, strike one from Borkhart. And uh, Borkhart, Brian, so far with eight strikeouts here in three innings. All the, the nine outs so far, eight of them strikeouts for Borkhart. He's got it going. And you asked me during the break here, uh, who do you play Legion baseball for? And I, I don't remember, to be honest with you. He might have... Played for one of the teams that we didn't. Uh, oh, sure. Might yeah. not have covered. Sure. He might have been playing up in the Double E division somewhere. Seven zero one six four zero two six one nine is our Amanda Frederick State Farm Insurance shutout line. Seven zero one six four zero two six one nine. Brian's got it on the screen there. If uh, if you know where for. Uh, Pitcher Kaysen Borkhart played Legion ball. You can send me a text. We'll, uh, we'll put it on the air for you. There's popped up. That's going to hit the roof, I think. There yep. we go. Chad, another hail dent for you. We'll get him up there. <clears throat> Some repairs. Braden Steffens reached on an air in his first at bat back in the first inning. Swung on a miss. Then that strike three is... Braden Steffens worked it to a full count. So strikeout number nine. It's going to bring up Jaden King, the right fielder. Started pitching for the Huskies here in game one. See he's wearing his arm sleeve and a little protector on his left elbow. <clears throat> Again, a beautiful day here at John Randall Field as Borkhart delivers the 1-0 pitch. It's 2-0 now to Jaden King. The Hawks coming in here at 3-5 overall, 0-1 in the EDC. 
Wapitan comes in at 0-1 in the EDC as well. Just played one game out in Valley City the other day. So we've got uh, Borkard delivers right down the pipe at strike one on the 3-0 pitch. So he's going to come back with that. There you go. Our buddy Colby Beaver is watching from Zambroda. Matt and Missy watching too as well. Cheering on the Huskies. So our buddy Colby watching. Colby, that, that guy, he tried to take my job. Yeah, he does. He tries to take your job. He wanted to come up and help me during the Boys of Summer event that day. I'm you know. sure he did. Yeah, he was ready to come up there and help take the microphone over for yep. me. <clears throat> Braxton Pauly steps up to the plate. In the Boys of Summer, a, a great, if I may say so, a, a great... Uh, film that was a documentary that was on Post 20, and uh, you can go to our YouTube page and watch that whole thing there. We're hosting it on our YouTube page, Swing and a Miss by Braxton. Still out there, and uh, hopefully it's going to be there for a long time. Yeah, it's not going anywhere, that's for no, sure. we're not planning on it. Again, uh, Boys of Summer, take a look at it if you haven't seen it yet. And uh, Colby. Our buddy that we were just talking about there. It's one and two now to Braxton Polly. Colby told me afterwards, he said he made the screen five times. <laughs> he said, Joe, I was on there five times. Oh, man. I'd have had my ugly mug up there a few more times than I needed. but Yeah, you're the you're, <clears throat> you're star of the show a little bit. No, yeah, so. So. Swing and a miss by Braxton Polly. He's recorded in another strikeout. So Cooper Klosterman's going to step up the plate. He grounded out. The only out that's not a strikeout here for Borkhart. Cooper grounded out the second in the second inning. Well, that one sails way outside by the left-hander. One and zero. Nick Langenwalter on deck for the Huskies as Klosterman takes the one-zero pitch and he drives that one and there's the first base hit for the Huskies out to right center. Round in second, headed to third is Jaden King. And Huskies will have runners at the corners. Nice base hit there. Good inside out swing, Brian. Yeah, nice solid hit there right in the gap in there, the right center. Advancing Jaden King all the way over to third. So now the Huskies in business here with runners on the corners. Bottom so, of the fourth inning. Senior Nick Langenwalter steps up to the plate now. We haven't heard from, uh, usually he's got some aunts out there watching out in the Washington on State. Washington State, that's right. Well, I'm surprised they're not tuned in and watching. Letting us know on the Amanda Frederick State Farm Insurance shout-out line. Uh, we, we know we got Colby watching, so that's good. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in, bud. We'll see you up here this summer, I'm sure. Swing and a miss there by Nick. That was a... <clears throat> Monster inside fastball there. 0-1. Oh Runners at the corners for the Huskies now after the base hit. First base hit of the game here for the Huskies. Swung on and missed. 0-2. Oh Klosterman on first. King on third. Langenwalter now with an 0-2 count facing Case and Burkhart. Borkhart, excuse me. Followed that one off. I guess not. I, I thought it might have hit Westby's glove, but he did not. It so. looked like it changed direction. Didn't it, though? Like, yeah. But he didn't. Nobody said anything. <clears throat> nobody reacted like it was hit. So just a weird foul ball. Very colorful bat he's got. <laughs> oh, now it might have hit him. Yep. yep. So now the bases are loaded. So it is. Yep. Coach Irie wants to get an explanation from the home plate umpire, Josh Nordic. Like he's saying, did he lean into it? But I don't think he did. I no, think I that breaking pitch just so. kind of got him. Yeah. The breaking pitch just came inside on him and caught Nick on the left elbow. Might have flinched a little bit, but. Uh, no, I'd be down crying. I'd be in a heap. Wow. Well, Workhart throws it pretty hard, that's for sure. <laughs> it does. All right, here we go. Bases loaded for the Huskies with Aiden Hayek stepping up to the plate. Aiden moved over to third base here when 
King left the mound. So the third baseman up for the Huskies takes strike one at the knees. Same first pitch <clears> that he <throat> threw to Nick Lang and Walter. Case and Borkhart in the windup now, in a full windup here, so the Huskies can get a big lead. He comes back with off speed here. Neil one pitch. It's followed back right into the net. Just got underneath it just a touch. 0-2 now. The Hayek 7-0 lead on the Farmers Union Insurance scoreboard for the Hawks, but the Huskies with their first real threat here in the bottom of the fourth. Breaking pitch. Caught the outside corner. First strike three. And Borkart records just another strikeout for our the inning and the side is retired but the Huskies strand three after one hit by Cooper Klosterman. We'll be back for the top of the fifth. The Hawks lead the Huskies 7-0 back after this. Suffering from an ankle sprain or a hit to the head? Did you know that a chiropractic adjustment can decrease ankle swelling by half and get your athlete back to their sport quicker? Or dizziness, brain fog can come from a neck subluxation? With 20 years of chiropractic experience, Dr. Andrea at Hornstein Family Chiropractic knows personally how chiropractic adjustments can get you back to playing your sport in no time. Request an appointment online at hornsteinfamilychiropractic.com or call 701-672-1300. Sometimes it's tough being a dad. Kids grow up fast. Hey, girls. Oh, love it. Dad, what are you doing? I'm TikToking. Is he serious? Don't even want me around anymore. You know when I first started noticing it? When I stopped getting hugs. Hugs mean a lot to a dad. So, with Command IQ, I found a way to get the hugs back. Watch. Dad, the Wi-Fi is down. Oh, let me see if I can fix it. It's back. Thanks, Dad. You're the best. With Command IQ, you can bring the hugs back. Bringing the hugs back. Red River Communications and Red River Communications Cable Channel 28. We want to thank Red River Communications for being a good partner that they are. We appreciate everything that they do for us as well. Red River Communications. Bringing the hugs back. I'm TikToking. All right, yeah. <laughs> I like that commercial. Yeah, I do. Case in Nordic steps up to the plate, uh, designated here, number nine hitter in the order. He was hit by a pitch in the last inning and reached on an air in the second. TikToking. Do you do TikToks? No, but my wife does. Oh, does she? So yeah, my wife and my daughter. They're they're oh, all. Oh, I'm about, sure your daughter. They're is. all about TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Blado breaks one off the edge of the table there, but doesn't quite come across. It's 2-0. and I have never done a TikTok. I've been in one. Have you? Yeah, well, you, you did the old, uh, didn't you do the gritty in one? Yeah, I, I, well, was a I, wasn't really there for Nordic. A, I wasn't really in a TikTok. But wasn't it? It was just a Facebook thing? Yeah. Okay. They, they convinced me <clears throat> to do something. We were taking pictures one day, and they're like, hey, come over here and do, say this. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're practice one day. Yep, yep. All you have to do is just say this. Yep, that's what it was. So, Top of the order, Jet Collins. His fourth time at the plate today. There goes the runner. Throw down by Langemalter. It's on target. Is it in time? Got him. Got him. A one-hopper from Nick Langemalter. Down to Malmy, I believe, was covering the bag there, didn't he? That was Malmy coming over from second. Yeah, he, so the Huskies with the uh, throw him out. 2 4 is what that one is. So there's one out on the board. Huskies with a much needed out there. Blado on hill delivers. Outside. Low, I believe the count's 1 and 1. <clears throat> TikTok. That's crazy, some of the stuff you see on there, isn't it? There's a ground ball to Klosterman, two hopper to big guy over at short. He gets it over to Braxton Polly in time, and that retires Jet Collins, the leadoff hitter. Coop with a nice play. Nice play over there at short. Cooper's first action, really, yeah. after moving over from third base. 
Doing a good job getting the second out there. Yeah, I saw a post on Facebook, and the guy had, like, you know, a boom box and a, oh my. a big giant camera and all this stuff, all these things. Ooh. And and it said, all these things are in your cell phone now. are all in Palm. <laughs> yeah, isn't that so, something? Yeah, it was yeah it had a big, uh, it, oh, I almost said the word, A word, but, you know, it had a big R, a uh, big Big boom box. Yeah, big. Uh, he had a big TV too, or yeah, something. Yeah, TV. Yep. Computer. I did see that. Charlie Lashowski at the plate, folks. So yeah, all that's in the palm of your hand now. Yeah, isn't that something? It's crazy. The old rotary dial phone. And that one almost got him. It's three and zero. It's amazing what the phone will do. You can even find yourself. Yeah, you can. Say, where am I? Yep. Not that I get lost that often, but a four-pitch walk here issued to Lashovsky. Brings up the pitcher, Kaysen Borkart. <clears throat> Left-handed hitter steps into the box. So far, Borkart is two for two. He's got a single and a double, and he was hit by a pitch. So two outs here, and there's a swing and pulled foul down the first baseline. Pulled hard into the fence there. Again, Brian, right they're hitting it hard, like you said. They're hitting it hard. Getting chased to that one is Tyler Jelmstead. Trotting down the right field line. <clears throat> so Blado set to deliver the 0-1 pitch. Ooh, and it goes behind the hitter. Borkart. And uh, going down to second, then will be Lashowski. Down there on the wild pitch. Beautiful day here at John Randall. Again, uh, reiterating that fact that puppies are here. Dogs are out too. So Just outside, so the count goes to two balls, one strike. <clears throat> See a big golden retriever down there. The kids are all huddled around petting him or her. And again, Blado goes behind the hitter, and it's 3-1. Just not quite timed up on his delivery there when he throws behind the hitter twice. Well, maybe we'd see a trip out there, but something on his release just isn't there as the runner goes to third. 7-0 <clears throat> lead here. And he lets up on that one, and it's ball four. Yeah, that one you can see you just trying to place that one in there. Yep. <clears throat> just doesn't have it timed up right now. Evan Krogan steps up to the plate, grounded out in the last at bat, walked once, and singled. So one for two so far for Krogan. We'll see a runner taking off here, I think, pretty soon. Nope, maybe not. There's a ground ball. Base hit out to right field. And heading over to third will be Borkart. And a base hit RBI single for Evan Krogan. Yeah, another one just placed nicely, just knocked right out there and drives in the run. Now 8 nothing in favor of the Hawks. <clears throat> Runners still on the corners. Oh yeah, i got to color that into my book there. The Borkert went all the way over to third. Now, make sure you keep track of that. I'm you, trying. I had to make. I had to erase things. No, you had it eight, I suppose, because you were listening to me. Yeah, I was counting your book. And here comes possibly the ninth run. Play it, play it. Nope. Nope. Oh. Everybody gets tangled up at home. Everybody shakes hands. Uh, two pitchers shake hands and say, excuse me. But coming home in the wild pitch was Borkert with the ninth run of the day, the game. Through there on a wild pitch. Down to second goes Krogan. <clears throat> Cooper, Cooper Fuchs at the plate. Brian, he's struggling at the plate today for the Hawks. He's 0 for 3. He's got all three strikeouts. See if Blado can continue that trend. And again, another 59-footer there gets away from Langenwalter. Blado's struggling a little bit with his control. 2-0 and oh for Skyler, a senior for the Huskies. Goes into the windup now instead of the stretch. 
2-0 pitch. Swung on and missed. Now if you're the Hawks, you're looking to get that next run. You're trying to get that one run here, see if mm -hmm. you can shorten this game. Yep. And play two five-inning games here. Blado sets and delivers in the dirt. That's a ball. And three and one count now to Cooper Fuchs. <clears throat> Swung on and missed, and the count goes full. Let's see if we can get him here. One pitch to get him. And a 3-2 pitch. Swung on, pulled down to Malmi at second. Picks it up. Over to Polly in time, and the side is retired. But the Horace Hawks score... Two here in the uh, top of the fifth, and they lead now nine to nothing as we go to the bottom of the fifth. We'll be right back after this break on Three Borders Sports Network. the time of year there's never a bad time to get your ride sparkling at all seasons car wash. deserves to shine all year round. We'll see you at All Seasons Car Wash. Bold Print and Wapitan is your local provider for all of your printing and promotional needs, including custom decals, which is a great way to promote your business. Bold Print also has custom framing and unique personalized gift ideas. Don't trust your family photos to an online company. Use Bold Print for all of your custom framing and canvas printing. Give them a call today, 701-642-2188, or check them out online, useboldprint.com. Well, the Huskies with a little bit of work to do here in the bottom of the fifth. They trail the Hawks, nine to nothing. Farmers Union Insurance Scoreboard. We want to thank Kyle DeVries. Been with us since day one. Been on the scoreboard since day one. Day so, one. Yeah, so thank you very much. I want to also thank Giant Seeds and Snacks, or also our Coaches Show sponsor. I want to thank Essentia Health. Uh, we were talking about how important Essentia Health was to the Wapiton High School right now with the uh, partnership they have. And, and of course, Chantel Shoot Bones. Um, just, we were talking with AD uh, Mike McCall before the game, and how important it was as Cade Malmy takes strike one, an important relationship for the Huskies. Yeah, those guys taking over <clears> all <throat> the sports athletic training and, you know, allow Chantel to stay at the school. And uh, it's essentially going to be part of the, uh, the, uh, the Shrine game the Shrine this game. summer. Yeah. And uh, we'll be broadcasting the Shrine game again here again. And? And we're also going to be broadcasting the banquet. How about that? The yeah. night before banquet. The night before. So we'll have that on Friday. Yeah. Or, uh, actually, yeah. Sorry, on the, it's it's the, the Saturday before the game, I believe it is actually not Friday night. Oh yeah, it's during the day, Saturday. Saturday yeah, right? until just before the game, but we'll have that live on uh, on Three Border Sports Network. And Malmi gets retired on strikes, so the first out here for the Huskies brings up. Let's see if they're not doing a pinch hitter here, are they? Nope. Case and Pinsonall comes up again. One of the twelve strikeouts is Kaysen. See what he can do here the second time facing Borkart. So, yeah, we're excited about doing the uh, the Shrine game once again, and uh, Essentia being a big part of that as well uh, for the uh, banquet. We'll be broadcasting that, too, on Three Border Sports Network. Fourth year during the Shrine game. How about that? Yeah, how about that? Crazy. There's a little chopper foul. On the first base side, so Kaysen will go back to the batter's box and do it all over in the count one and two. So, yeah, our fourth year doing the – if you're looking at uh, possibly doing some advertising with us on that one, give us an email, too. You can send us an email to Brian. Three Border Sports Network at gmail.com. Oh, and i got to stand up. I'm getting a Charlie horse. Yes, Pinsonall takes strike three. Ouch. 
That's what happens when you get old. You need that high chair that you had last night. How about that? Yeah. <clears throat> George bringing us some classic high chairs. It's going to bring up the uh, top of the order again with Skyler Blade. Oh, Eli Kappas pinch hit for him in inning number three, but Skyler comes back up now. As gets his spot back in the lineup. Swings at the first one. Strike one. I want to thank all the rest of our sponsors. Gripper Sports. Hey, don't forget Gripper down on 2nd Avenue in downtown Wapiton. They've got all your favorite team sports apparel. Is Count is one and one. Oh, oh, and two. It's outside now. It's one and two. I want to thank Bell Bank. Minkota Ag Products. All Seasons Car Wash. Bold Print. Red River Green. Hornstein Family Chiropractic. Just foul back into the pads. And Blade will be back up there for a one and two pitch. North Dakota State College of Science. They got their big night going on over there tonight. Red River Communications, Cable Channel 28, Farmers, Mindac Farmers Cooperative. And a swing and a miss, and three more strikeouts go in the book for Kaysen Burkhart. So that'll be three outs here, three up, three down. We're going to go to the top of the six. Nine nothing lead for the Hawks. We'll be right back after this on Three Borders Sports Network. Lucky for us, life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure, or start a new business, Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Wapiton Deli and Eatery, serving delicious deli staples paired with great service and friendly staff. They use the best ingredients and provide a great atmosphere. If you have an office party or an at-home celebration, Wapiton Deli and Eatery can help with your next event. And now you can order online for in-store pickup. Check it out at wapitondeliandeatery.com or call 642-3639. Brody Strom, Austin Olean, and Espen Westby, your scheduled first three hitters here for the Horace Hawks. I think they still go by West Fargo Horace, don't West they? West Fargo Horace would yeah. be the official name. And I see the bus they brought was a West Fargo bus. So. Yep, it's all part of the West <clears throat> Fargo School District. Um, so I guess officially it's a West Fargo school, just like West Fargo Cheyenne. Sure. Uh, but it is Horace High School. All right, so here we got, is that number 14? That does not look, looks like we have a pinch hitter here. Number 13. Pinch hitter number 13, Tyler Jelmstead, steps up to the plate. So, Ty so Tyler up at the plate here for the Horace Hawks, his first time at the plate. It's a breaking pitch from Blado, a little bit low. We're in the top of the six. Horace leads nine to nothing. We might see a few more pinch hitters come to the plate here for Horace. Yeah, I would think so. I would guess Borkhart's going to finish her up, though. Doom comes inside. Yeah, so we're looking forward to the Shrine game, Shrine football game. It's been hosted up at Mayville State. This will be the third year, won't it? Third year up there, that's correct. There's a walk issued here to Jelmstead. <clears throat> Game was shortened last year due to weather. Oh, yeah, couple, that's right, a jeepers. Couple, couple delays. And, yep. uh, oh, remember that? It was a, a long day of football. And, it was. And, uh, both games ended up being shortened, and that the uh, – the second game, I think we only played a half. Yeah, actually. we didn't even get the half in, I don't think. Austin Olean steps into the plate here. He singled in the last at bat, grounded out in the third inning, and walked and scored in the second inning. Yeah, it was a weird day that day. 
thunderstorms in the area, and they had to hold off for lightning. The tornado warnings. And tornado warnings, and uh, just the field was wet. I've still got a picture on my field from just, it was a turf field, and it's crowned, of course, a little bit, but it was just wet. And with the weather getting bad, and it was getting close to 10 o'clock, and they just didn't want to go too late. Pickoff move over to first. Pauly puts a tag down, but not in time. <clears throat> Runner at first is Jelmstead. So Lean steps back in now. Espen Westby scheduled up. Looks like he's standing over there on deck circle. Blado just comes outside on that one. Shadows here coming off of the trees along First Street here in Wapiton. Starting to creep into the infield now as you can see it. On your camera shot there, that digital guru camera. That one bounces in the dirt. The runner stays in place. Langenwalter retrieves it. There's another fly there, buddy. Well, if you'd shut that window. <laughs> need that window open. Well, what? why not? I can see just fine. My window's not open. You're not cold, are you? Come on, though. Not cold, I know better, but. Than. First Community Credit Union. Ben and the crew over there. We appreciate everything you're doing for us. Sanford Health, Red River Valley Western Railroad. Blado comes across the knees, strike two. It's full count now. Wapit and Deli Dean and the crew, they've got some good lunch specials over there. Full count pitch. Oh, he checks swing and held up on it and gets the walk. So two maybe walks he was going to go all the way yeah. around there. <clears throat> Raleigh would say Wapitendeli, home of the famous grinder. Grinder, and he is correct. It is fantastic, too. <laughs> that is, that's my favorite. And here comes the catcher, Espen Westby. You know, I went to school at the Harvard of the North, right? Yeah, well, you went up to UND. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. Okay. Well, that's popped up. Let me make this call first. It should be infield fly. It is called. Braxton Polly makes the catch, but everybody stays put. So uh, infield fly rule is in effect. Okay, go ahead, Brian. Well, Talk about well. Let me say, uh, Casey Nordic, the designated hitter, coming up next. Well, up there at Harvard of the North, <laughs> yeah, UND, they have a fantastic place with the well, probably the best grinder that you can have. Oh, really? Yeah, at the Red Pepper. But I'm gonna tell you right now. Well, that has nothing to do with UND. Well, I mean, it does. No, anybody who's gone, they're located in, in, in Grand Forks. Anybody who has gone to UND has gone to the Red Pepper. Okay. <laughs> My point is. Okay. Oh, Nordic drills that one to third base, and Hayek picks it up and gets it over to first in time. Could have stepped on third for the out. Didn't uh, probably didn't think about it. There was a shot there that he was worried Aiden, about just getting that ball over the first. Aiden Hayek doing a nice job there doing it though. My point was that yes. The grinder down at the deli, <clears throat> yes, rivals the red pepper. And it's I'm close to it's, first. It's, uh, it's, well, um, <laughs> it might be first. Jet Collins steps into the box for the Hawks here. The tenth run, sitting just ninety feet away, and the Hawks would sure like to get it across. And they both reached on walks. I can honestly say I don't think I've ever had a grinder. You better get on board then. I don't you, think you got to get on board. I don't know if I can do that. you got to get on board. One ball, no strikes. Swung on, fouled down the walk-up pass. One and one. Had a good broad last night at the Breckenridge concession stand. Yeah, you got to branch out, though. You can't just keep having a plain burger. Serious? Bologna sandwich or whatever. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. you got to... <laughs> Got to broaden the horizon a little bit. And Blado delivers the one-one. Comes up high. It's two and one. I like ribs. Well, I do too. That one goes outside. Check swing, and nobody's going to appeal. It's three and one. I like them with a little little kick to a little spice. Do you? Yeah, I like a little. That's probably too much for you, though. Yeah, I don't like that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just make complaint. There's a fly ball line drive right over Cooper Closeman's outstretched arms there. Big Coop couldn't quite bring her in. Here comes the throw to second, and everybody's going to be safe. So two runs come across. And a two out double brings in two for Jet Collins. 
Hawks have been doing a lot of damage with two, two <coughs> outs. And the Huskies going to have to see if they can get out of this inning. And they're going to have to get to work at the plate or else this one will be over. Uh, Jet Collins down for three RBI too, Brian. So he's having a good day. Charlie Lashowski at the plate. He's walked a couple of times. He had the triple out the right field. Just barely stayed in the park. It bounced off the wall there over Jaden King's head there. Yeah, that ball was roped out to right field. And, and the man has died all the I way down. I was going to say, there is no flag movement at all. Beautiful night here. Kind of an excuse me swing there. What did you have last night? Burger? I had a brat. Well, you had a brat, too. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. I got something for you. I'm thinking of it, man. All right. I'm I knew ahead of time. As, as long as you're looking out, I appreciate yep. that. Yep. Bologna sandwich? It might be. Yep. That's why that's, yeah. It's plain. Yep, plain. Yep. Two pieces of bread. No mustard, no mayo. But I think you're going to like no what nothing. else I got you. All so. right. All right. All right. I, I did get you a treat, too. I, I think I know what it is, so I'm going to be happy about Two that. Two and so. one to Lashowski. Runner at scoring position now at third base is Jet Collins. He just doubled. Went to third on a wild pitch. Deuces are up on the board. Number two at the plate. Number two balls, two strikes, two outs. Caught the corner. Strike three. So good pitch from Blado. And that will retire the side. Not before the Hawks score two here in the top of the sixth. They move up 11 to nothing here on the Huskies. They got to come up with at least two runs to keep this one going and put it into the seventh inning. We'll be right back with the bottom of the six on Three Borders Sports Network. In this place, we see potential like nowhere else. Here, vision is boundless. That's why we never settle. We look for the moments when everything becomes possible. The moments that inspire us to make every day better. In this place, there's no such thing as good. There's only great. This is orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. The folks at Tyler Farm Supply understand that farming is hard work, and that's why they only offer durable and reliable short-line farm equipment that you can depend on. Whether you're a small-scale farmer or manage a large operation, they have the tools that you need to get the job done quickly and efficiently. Plus, with their competitive pricing and financing options, Tyler Farm Supply makes it easy for you to get the equipment you need without breaking the bank. Give them a call today, 701-642-8827. All right, welcome back to John Randall Field, Three Borders Sports Network. Looks like we might have some changes here. Uh, for the Hawks. I didn't catch that till just now when I saw Josh Nordic walking across to give the changes to the Wapiton dugout, and I see we have a new pitcher for the Hawks, and that is Jet Collins on the hill. So Collins will take the hill for the Hawks here in the bottom of the six, try to shut down the Huskies here. Huskies again need two to keep this one going. So let's see. Uh, I think it looks like Jelmstead went to. Is that 13? No. I'm trying to read the numbers from he, up he here. He won't turn all the way around. <laughs> I think it's 11, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah, we got some defensive changes here for the Hawks. JV is over at the airport park playing tonight, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're there at the airport. Yep. I think that's 11 at short. Brady, or Braden Steffen steps up to the plate now for the Huskies. So don't mind me if I don't make the defense. We didn't get reports here from the umpire as to who's doing what, but we did see that we knew have a new pitcher, and that's Jet Collins. And it's one and one to Braden Steffens. I think we might have <clears throat> lost our center field camera. Oh, no. Swung on and missed. I mean, I got to run out there during the... I'll run out there and see what the deal is. Okay. I see it. looks like it's still sitting there. Yeah, but... Oh. Third outside. 
You keep going there. I'll I was going to say, unless there's some kids out there messing with it. But Braden Steffens now evens out the count, two and two, and he'll swing at that one. Goes down the first baseline, foul. So the count remains two balls, two strikes to Braden. Braden so far reached on an air and struck out his third time at the plate here, facing the new pitcher for the Hawks, Jet Collins. That one's bounded right back up to the box. Collins picks it up over to first. And, this, uh, and Braden Steffens is retired on the 1-3 putout. <clears throat> over at first base for, for the Hawks is Toby Redderath now. So I looked over there and I saw a different number. So it was Redderath now over at first for Krogan. So Jaden King sets up to the plate. Jaden's walked and struck out. Finishing with 14 strikeouts was Porkhart. So he had a, a good day on the hill and one walk, I believe. Other than that, he was pretty good. To he was solid. Stellar. <clears throat> so 1-0 and oh now to Jaden King. Big Bird he's affectionately referred to. And he would do kind of a big bird little dance when he'd hit a big hit or whatever for post-20. He'd kind of do that little thing. Almost a little karate kid action. Yeah. Swung on a miss. Big cut there. By the big senior. Two and one. He wanted that one. And the flag out on the scoreboard is pretty much straight down. A little bit of a breeze, but not much. Outside. So, Jaden King ahead in the count now. Three balls, one strike. Hitters count. Third base berm over there is pretty full. Down the first base line, everybody's sitting over there under those trees over there. Those newly planted trees a couple years ago. Strike two to Jaden. So, now the count's full to the senior. <clears throat> so Collins delivers the full count pitch. Jaden fouls it up over the top of the grandstand, and it'll be full count again. First Street located over on the first base side. Huskies will have to. <clears throat> get at least two runs here to keep this game going. Oof, and that was just low, so Jaden King gets his second walk. That was close. Jaden even waited for the call on that one. So King gets the walk, and that's going to – got a new pinch hitter here for Braxton Pauley, and that will be Brady DeVries stepping up to the plate for the Huskies. Brady getting his first at bat here. Brady, one of the uh, DeVries twins that you had. Well, you had a couple of DeVries girls, but Leah was on your uh, Lady Husky basketball, his twin sister. Pretty good basketball player and evidently pretty good track athlete, Pretty good too. sprinter, huh? Yeah. How about that? First year running track and doing some damage out there. Yeah, it sounds like they might be able to qualify for state even already. Yeah, they're, so they're early they're, in the season. Really, that's pretty close. Ooh, King was leaning, but... Uh, not in time. That was just off the mark a little bit on the throw. Carlson Family Insurance, OSPTI, our post-game show. Stay tuned for that. We'll have that coming up at the completion of the game. Swing and a miss by DeVries. It's behind in the count. One and two. Also, don't forget, we've got our Comdale Innovation Play of the Week coming up. Let us show you how we can deliver your next project faster and better. Comdale Innovation. And the pitch. Ooh, that was kind of an off-speed looking. I don't know what that was. It was a changeup that came up high, but it looked like it was off-speed a little bit. <clears throat> two and two now to Brady DeVries. And that one sails outside, and it comes across the batter's box on the other side. It's full count now to Brady. Collins definitely throwing hard. Do up next is Cooper Klosterman. I can't see him. Another pickoff move not there. Is Cooper up next there? Can you see him behind? I can't see him behind the pole. 
And it looks like it's uh, somebody else. So Brady is retired on strikes, so that's two outs now for the Huskies here as number 12 is Cooper Klosterman. <clears throat> I thought you were holding up number three to me. <laughs> One and two, that's 12, right? <laughs> And My even, Minnesota math was taking over. I was adding the, the one right, and the two. Even the right way. Yeah, you had it the right way. My Minnesota math was saying, I got to add that? Wow. One plus two is three. Well, there's no number three on the roster, you, but you Skyler Blato. You got some learning to do. I do. I'll take cues from the producer better soon. Yeah. Cooper takes outside for ball. It's one and one. Cooper... Grounded out the first, or excuse me, grounded out the second in his first at bat, and he has the lone hit for the Huskies he got in the fourth inning. There's another pickoff move. I don't know what they're thinking that Jaden's going to be taking off anywhere here with an 11 0 lead. 1 1 and 2 outs. It's fouled over to First Street into the neighbor's yards. And the count goes to 1 and 2. <clears throat> Huskies down their last strike possibly and that one goes outside it's two and two so the deuce is wild on the scoreboard again two balls two strikes two outs Cooper Klosterman and the Huskies down to their last strike unless Cooper can keep it going Collins delivers, swung on, grounded at first, and he takes it off the chest as Redderath, and he gets it over to first. Nice play over there by Toby Redderath. That bounced up off the grass lip and hit him right in the chest, and he recovered with it. He didn't He did blink an eye. Go over there and check on it. He's like, I'm good. Yeah, so we're going to take a break here. We'll come back with the OSPTI postgame show right after this. The Hawks win 11-0. Every business begins with an idea. With dedication, hard work, and high-speed broadband, that idea can grow into something giant. The member organizations that form BAN are proud to support North Dakota businesses every step of the way, from the soil to the stadium. The Broadband Association of North Dakota, helping North Dakotans grow bright ideas into big business. Smith Motors in Wapiton. We make sure that when you need a vehicle, we'll find the perfect one that matches your lifestyle and budget. Like the eye-catching Chevy Equinox, the powerful, always dependable Chevy Silverado, or the rugged, hard-working GMC Sierra. Since 1960, Smith Motors has provided an excellent automotive buying experience. From low-pressure sales to high-quality service, our customers always come first. Find your new Chevrolet or GMC today at Smith Motors. Small-town friendly, big-town deals. All right, welcome back to Three Borders Sports Network and John Randall Field here in Chahankapa Park, Wapiton, North Dakota. The Horace Hawks, West Fargo Horace Hawks, just defeated the Wapiton Huskies in six innings here by the 10-run rule. 11-0 to zero was your final score. Looking at the line score here for the Hawks, 11 runs on 10 hits, and they committed one error and left nine on base, Brian. And the Huskies, no runs, one hit. They got one hit by Cooper Klosterman, they committed two errors, and left five on base. So the story of the game, Brian, I think is going to be Case and Borkhart uh, finishes after five innings, almost 15 strikeouts. He had 14, so all but one of his outs were strikeouts. So yeah, good Huskies, game by Case and Borkhart. Yeah, Huskies just didn't have an answer for, for Borkhart, and uh, <clears> the Hawks <throat> were able to ride him to victory, get 11 runs to help out the good pitching. 
Uh, I don't know not much you can say about that. I mean, yeah. the Huskies just uh, didn't get it done at the plate. And yep. One couple, hit. A couple miscues in the field, too. Yep. Um, you know, that let the score get up there and, and uh, end this game early. But see if they can, you know, make some adjustments here and t- turn things around here in game number two. In a game that took one hour and 45 minutes here at John Randall Field and our OSPTI postgame show is brought to you by OSPTI. For all your physical therapy needs, contact the professionals at OSPTI with locations in Hankinson, Fergus Falls, and in Breckenridge. OSPTI postgame show again in a game that took one hour and 45 minutes. By the 10-run rule, the Horace Hawks, West Fargo Horace Hawks, defeat the Wapiton Huskies 11 to nothing. Don't forget to go to our website. Check out our uh, link for game number two here coming up in about 20 minutes, I would guess. Maybe 15. We'll see. But uh, we'll be back with game number two right here on Three Borders Sports Network in a little bit. For Brian Watson, I'm Joe Schreiner. The Horse Hawks, 11. Wapitan Huskies, 0. Back after this. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 